Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to use the Animation Blender option in the Duric Basso script. The Animation Blender is a way to trigger animations with markers in your composition. You can download the Duic Basso script for free and I will provide the link in the description of the video and you can choose from Windows or Mac and you can find here the installation instructions which are fairly simple. In your After Effects, you can find the Duic script at the bottom of your Windows menu, right here. You can grab the Duic Basel panel and snap it wherever you want in your work area. If this is the first time you are using Duic Basel, I want you to go to the Settings menu and make sure you have your user interface set to Standard Mode and click on Apply Changes. Now, if you go in the Rigging menu, under the links and constraints, you should be able to find the Animation Blender. The Animation Blender works with markers, so the first thing we need to do is to place markers in our composition. I will just hit U here to see the keyframes and where are located the different animations I did for this example. The first way to create a marker is to go here on the right side of your composition panel. By clicking and holding your click, you can drag it here to the left, and by holding Shift, I can snap it to my keyframes on my composition. So I will snap it here to the very first keyframe of my first animation. Another way to create a marker is to hit the asterisk key on your keyboard. If you do the same thing by holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, you can already access the setup window where you can name your animation and set a duration. You will need to set a duration on your markers for the Animation Blender to work. Here I don't know the duration, so I will just click OK. And another way to change the duration of your marker is to hold the Alt key or Option on a Mac and click on the marker and drag it to the right. And this way you can change the duration of your marker. If you hold Shift, you can snap it to your keyframes. So I will snap it here to the last keyframe of this animation. If I want to modify a marker, I have to double click on it. So if I double click, I can change the name of my first marker click OK, and by holding Alt or Option on a Mac, I can snap my marker for the duration of my keyframes. The Animation Blender panel offers another way to create markers on your composition. If you trim your work area to the duration of your animation, you can enter a name for this animation here and click Set, and Duic placed the marker for you. That's really the fastest way to create markers for your Animation Blender. Now I need to set the composition where my animation is placed and to set a composition for my controller layer. So my animations are in this active composition, so if I click on the eyedropper, it will select automatically the active composition. And here I want to place the control layer in the same composition, so I will click on the eyedropper again and click on blend. So here we have this new layer, the control layer from the animation blender, and here you can notice we have uh, expressions on our properties. If I hit my RAM preview, I can see nothing changed. I just have my three animations playing. I need to place new markers to trigger these animations at different time. So let's say I want my animation to start with the jump. So I will go on this layer and make sure this is this layer selected. And by holding Alt or Option on a Mac and hitting again the asterisk key, I have this setup window where I can name it. So I will name it Jump, click OK, and now if I hit my RAM preview, I see my jump animation. And this way, the Animation Blender effect overrides the animations of my keyframe. Now I can see only the jump animation. Another way to set markers on this layer is to go here in the Animation menu and under the Tools section I will find an Animation Blender. And this Animation Blender will allow me to select from the animations I've set previously. So here if I want my cube to grow, I will select the Grow animation, click on Set Animation, and now if I hit Play, my animation grows. So I can place my shrink animation here, click on set, 
make sure you have your layer selected. Click on set. And here I can ask it to jump again. So if I hit my ramp preview, I see now all the animations are not triggered by the placement of the keyframes, but by the placement of my markers. Let me show you other features uh, with this new composition. Here I have a rig with my character and all the animations set here under controllers. I already set the markers and we have walk cycle, a stop animation, here is looking on the left side and then on the right side again. So I want to use my animation blender, maybe to loop the walk cycle and make it last a little longer before it stops and then does these actions. A very easy way to do that uh, would be to select the compositions here, just like I did in the previous example, and click on Blend. But this way, I would trigger all the animations that are set here in this composition, and I have a lot more keyframes than in the previous example. Here I have a different rig for the head of the character, where I can make it turn to the left and to the right. And let's say I want to be able to change this whenever I want, independently from the animation blender trigger. A very nice option here is to ask the animation blender not to trigger all the animated properties, but only the selected properties. So let's say here I want to trigger only the main animation, but I don't want to trigger the secondary animations of the head of the character. So I will select all these keyframes. I will make sure I set this composition for the animation blender. And here I want to place the control in this main composition. I click on blend and here I have my controller layer. If I scroll through this animation, everything is still the same. But if I go back to my pre-composition, I can see now the animation blender placed expressions only on the properties I've selected before. And here I have no expressions and I can still control these animations independently from the animation blender. So that's a very powerful feature if you are starting to do advanced character animation with very sophisticated rigs. So if I go back to my main comp, I can go here in the animation panel and under the tools section in the animation blender, I can see now all the animations of my character. So I want to start with the walk cycle. I will click on set and make sure you have your control layer selected. And if I go here in the effects of my animation blender, I will select the loop option. Now, if I hit my ramp preview, I can see the walk cycle of my character. But let's say I want him to look over his shoulder here, in this duration. I will double click, 23 frames. I will place the animation for the head. Here, I want him to look this way. I just place the keyframe like this. And then I want to change that. I will copy and paste this keyframe here. And I want him to go back to the initial position. So you see, when I play my animation, I can trigger the length of my walk cycle with the animation blender and still keep control on some other uh, secondary animations from my character. Now, let's say I want him to stop here. So I will just select the control layer. I want to set the stop animation and click on set button. And here my character stops. But since I've set the loop option, now it will stop in a loop. So in order to change that, I will set a keyframe on the loop option. I will hit you on my keyboard and I want to set it to off. And I will go back here to the walk cycle marker and make sure it's set on for the walk cycle. So now my walk cycle loops, and when we reach the stop marker, we just stop once. Now once my character stopped, maybe I want him to look on the left, so I will set the left animation here. And if I click here in my composition, maybe I want to play uh, these animations I did here for the eyes. And for the head of my character, you see here the eyes blink. 
and the head turns on the left. And now I can set the right animation. Oops, sorry, I have to make sure I set on the control layer, so always make sure you select this layer. I will click on the set animation. And if I go back here, I can play those keyframes here. So when I hit my RAM preview here in the main composition, I can see all the animation I've set up here with the animation blender and the keyframes on the rig of my character's head. Now if I look at the stop animation, when we reach the stop marker, there is a glitch here. So we could go here in the animation blender effects and go for the blending options. I can see the blending option is selected and I want to choose for ease instead of linear. And I can set a little duration and here the duration is set in seconds. So I will have to type 05 to select half a second. But each time I try this option, I never see a very good result. To solve this issue, I will disable here the animation blender. So once the animation blender is disabled, uh, the animation is no longer triggered by this control layer. But instead, I can go back to this pre-composition and see the animation where my keyframes are placed. So here I can go on the very first frame on the very first pose of my stop animation and the way I set my animations I know that the last frame of my walk cycle is exactly the same pose as the first frame of my stop animation and I really recommend uh, you work this way with animations that can be played together. So now let me go back to my main composition and here I will take a snapshot of this stop pose and I can enable again the animation blender. And when I reach the stop animation, I will just go one frame before when my walk cycle is still playing. So now I will try to find a pose that looks like the first frame of my stop animation. I will hit the snapshot here. I see it's quite a good pose, so I will just place this marker here and I will make sure to place this keyframe for the loop here. So now when I play my animation, obviously I won't have this glitch anymore. So I can still trigger the animation this way and I keep a great control on my secondary animations thanks to the selected properties. So from there, I will let you imagine all the potential of using uh, such a tool. Uh, you can use it, of course, for your character animations, but also uh, with many other uh, situations in your uh, motion designs. If you are considering using uh, more often Duik, or if you are already uh, using it on a regular basis, uh, I would like you to take a minute to consider uh, donate uh, for the team uh, who creates this incredible tool, or you can maybe become a Patreon for Duduf, the creator uh, of this script. If you want to support me, I will provide you with a link to my website where you can find my portfolio and under the blog section, you will find the tutorials. And here there is a shop where you can go and scroll through the designs I put here for you. And if you like them, well, it would be a great support for me. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. I'm really happy you were here for this tutorial and I hope to see you next time.